In this video, we're going to work backwards. We are given four terms of a sequence, it's an infinite sequence, and they're asking us to write an expression in explicit form for this sequence. They're asking us to find the nth term of the sequence, right? So we have to find something that says a sub n is equal to some formula, and that's what we need to find. How do we find the formula that we can use to find these terms? So I like to list the terms of the sequence in a table because that helps me find the formula. Notice that if you look at this sequence, a lot of you will say, well, this is easy. Um, each term in the sequence is found by adding 2 to the previous number in the sequence. For example, to get to 3, I added 2 to 1. To get to 5, I added 2 to 3. So I'm adding 2 to the previous term. But this pattern that you'd notice is not what I want to look at when I'm looking for explicit form of the sequence. When we talk about the explicit form, we want to know how this term relates to its position, not how this term relates to the previous term. So that's the difference. We're looking for explicit form. So I'm going to write the term's position in the top row. So position number 1, position number 2, 3, and 4. And in the bottom row, I'm going to write the term that occupies that position. So position 1 is occupied by a 1. Position 2 is occupied by a 3. Position 3 is occupied by 5 and position 4 is occupied by a 7. So there I have listed the position of the term and the term itself. And once I do that, now I can concentrate in looking at the position of the term and what the term is, and I try to find a pattern within these two things. How did I get from 1 to 1? Did I add 1 plus 0 and got 1? Did I multiply 1 times 1 and, get, and got 1? Did I multiply 1 times 2 and then subtract 1? All these are possibilities. But we need all of these possibilities, or one of these possibilities, to work for all of our terms. So I'm going to write a sub 1 is equal to 1. I'm going to write a sub 2 is equal to 3. 3. And usually the first term is the hardest one to find a pattern for, especially when it's from 1 to 1. So I'm going to skip the first term for this example. I'm going to go straight to the second term and to the third term, etc. a sub 3 is equal to 5 and a sub 4 is equal to 7. So here's what I do. I look at 2 and I look at 3 and I try to see a pattern. I can say I got from 2 to 3 by adding 1 to 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. But then if I use that same pattern for the third term, 3 plus 1, that doesn't give me 5. So that doesn't work. Another thing I notice is 2 and 3. If I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4, which is 1 more than 3. If I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6, which is 1 more than 5. And if I multiply 4 times 2, I get 8, which is 1 more than 7. I see a pattern here. Let's rewrite these terms. 3 is equal. I can say 2 times 2 minus 1. That will give you 4. Minus 1 will give you the term. So what I did here is I took the position of the term. I multiplied it times 2, and then I subtracted 1, and I get 3. Let's try with the third term. I'm going to take the position of the term, and I'm going to multiply it times 2. So 2 times the position of the term gives you 6, and I want to get 5, so I'm going to subtract 1. Let's try the fourth term. I take the position of the term, and I multiply times 2, 
and I subtract 1. Notice this pattern here. I have a pattern which I can write an equation to. Then I can do dot 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 and I can say a sub n will equal, where is n here? Notice I have 2, 2, 2. I'm multiplying each of the terms by 2, so 2 is a constant. It's going to be 2 times what? Times, notice that this number inside the parentheses is the same exact number as the position. So I'm going to use n to represent this number because that represents the position. I took every position number and I multiplied it times 2 and then I have a minus 1. That means that this sequence that was given to me can be found, any term can be found in this sequence if I take the position of the sequence, I multiply it times 2 and I subtract 1. Let's see if that works for the first term. If I take this position and I multiply it by 2, that gives you 2 times 1, which is 2, and then subtract 1, that will give you 1, which is the term. So there you have it, a sub n is equal to 2n minus 1. And there is your explicit form of the sequence. I'll see you in the next video.